Let's bring in our White House correspondent, Suzanne Malveaux, who's been at her post all morning. Suzanne, I know they've been uh, planning, making plans, but just now they've made the big announcement. Well, absolutely. We saw a couple of hours ago President Bush, who arrived back here at the White House, returning from Camp David, cutting that trip short. Uh, we saw him enter the residence and then onto the Oval Office with his chief of staff, Andy Card. We were told that he was notified of this tragedy. Uh, shortly after it happened, and at 10.30, he spoke with the director of NASA about the details of all of this. He uh, came back to the White House to better monitor the situation. Uh, Judy, as you know, the White House, um, the, the flag here lowered at half staff just a few hours ago. A very uh, symbolic of the, the tragedy here, recognizing that tragedy. Uh, as you may recall, this is really a time for, for comfort, to comfort the nation as well as to inform, uh, to mourn the loss. Uh, when, uh, when it was uh, January 28th, uh, 1986, when uh, President Ronald Reagan had this uh, very sad duty, he went just hours after the Challenger had exploded, and he said, I want to read this line to you. This is the last line that he delivered in his speech to the nation saying, we will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. Uh, clearly, this is a very important moment for the president, uh, a need to confront to comfort the nation and also to talk about the sense of bravery, um, the, the sense of dedication that these people had aboard the shuttle. We have also learned that the president has spoken with Prime Minister uh, Ariel Sharon. Uh, as you know, one of those aboard the shuttle was an Israeli citizen, uh, giving his condolences, passing that along to Israel as well. Judy? Suzanne, you're, you are absolutely right. This is one of the most important uh, uh, jobs uh, functions that a president can perform. Uh, not only is the president the leader of the country, the one who is the uh, making uh, decisions uh, day in and day out, but the president must be the uh, consoler in chief at a time like this, a time of great loss, of great tragedy. And you do remind us of uh, the role that President Reagan played in 1986. The nation shocked because at that time it was the first space accident in uh, something like 20 years. America was was uh, completely uh, rocked back on its heels by the, by the idea uh, that there would be astronauts lost in space. And I remember, because I was covering, uh, covering the Challenger explosion then, I was working for the public broadcasting system for PBS, and uh, President Reagan's remarks played an enormous role in holding the country and bringing the country together. And uh, the line that you, uh, that you quoted, uh, slipping, the surly bonds of Earth is one that I think all of us remember. I have every reason to believe that uh, President Bush uh, and the people around him remember that and are acutely aware of the important role that the president plays at a time like this. Again, it is just after 2 o'clock Eastern Time. We are expecting any moment to hear from President Bush. He will be addressing the nation from the cabinet room there in the White House. Suzanne, when this happened, the president was at Camp David uh, planning to spend the weekend there after a very difficult week dealing with uh, Iraq. Absolutely, Judy. This is really a pivotal weekend for the president. As you know, Secretary of State Colin Powell to go before the United Nations Security Council on Wednesday to present the case against Saddam Hussein, additional evidence. Uh, this administration, uh, under a great deal of pressure from some U.S. allies who want to see more information, more evidence, uh, to, that would justify the possibility of using military action against Saddam Hussein, already the president really having quite a full plate this weekend. I should also mention as well, Judy, just kind of a sign of the times, uh, one of the assumptions that so many people made when they first saw that this uh, shuttle was missing, that they had lost contact, was uh, terrorism. That was something that people were thinking about. In 1986, that was not necessarily the first thought on everyone's mind. Uh, clearly, this White House, as well as many people, aware of the possibilities of the danger, but senior administration officials telling us there is no indication that that was the cause of this tragedy today. Judy? All right, Suzanne, as we said, we are waiting for President Bush to speak to the nation from the White House, from the Cabinet Room. And uh, again, as we wait uh, for his remarks, uh, my colleague Miles O'Brien, who's been with us all morning. Miles, I, even at this moment, I have a sense that, uh, you know, there was an enormous reluctance in 1986 when the Challenger exploded uh, for people. Nobody even wanted to think about going back into space again at that point. But you do have the sense now that Americans have somehow, as horrible as this is, we have 
come, somehow come to, uh, to the realization that space flight is dangerous, we will lose people from time to time. No one is saying we won't go into space again. Well, let's remember who was aboard Challenger. Krista McAuliffe, civilian, teacher, that, that launch, that tragedy was witnessed by school children all across this country. It was devastating for so many people, and particularly for children, and there was a certain poignance to that uh, which made it a little more difficult, I think, for people to, to uh, handle. Uh, the sense of a, of a civilian on board that shuttle not fully appreciating the risks, in this case, a crew completely made up of test pilot types, engineers, career astronauts who fully understand the risk. Perhaps that has something to do with it. Perhaps the fact that school children the world over were not necessarily witnessing what we just saw this morning. Perhaps that changes things. Um, as we look at Mission Control Houston, this is a remarkable scene here. You're seeing the good people of NASA whose job it is to watch a space shuttle while it is in orbit from those consoles. Every last little technical item on a shuttle has a readout on a screen down here so that they know precisely what is going on at any given moment. Someone asked me earlier, is there a black box on the shuttle? That room is the black box. There is a constant stream of data to that room, giving them a full sense of what's happening to every last piece, every last system of a space shuttle. Right now, that team which has spent the better part of the morning collecting its data, gathering up its data in order to prepare for an investigation, is now ready for what we are ready for, which is the President of the United States, who has returned to the White House, will be addressing those good folks at NASA who work so hard to make space travel, uh, while risky, a reasonable thing to do, and the rest of the nation. Let's listen to the President. My fellow Americans, this day has brought terrible news and great sadness to our country. At 9 o'clock this morning, Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our space shuttle Columbia. A short time later, debris was seen falling from the skies above Texas. The Columbia is lost. There are no survivors. On board was a crew of seven. Colonel Rick Husband, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Anderson, Commander Laurel Clark, Captain David Brown, Commander William McCool, Dr. Kultna Shapla, and Ilan Ramon, a colonel in the Israeli Air Force. These men and women assumed great risk in the service to all humanity. In an age when space flight has come to seem almost routine, it is easy to overlook the dangers of travel by rocket and the difficulties of navigating the fierce outer atmosphere of the Earth. These astronauts knew the dangers, and they faced them willingly, knowing they had a high and noble purpose in life. Because of their courage and daring and idealism, we will miss them all the more. All Americans today are thinking as well of the families of these men and women who have been given this sudden shock and grief. You're not alone. Our entire nation grieves with you. And those you love will always have the respect and gratitude of this country. The cause in which they died will continue. Mankind is led into the darkness beyond our world by the inspiration of discovery and the longing to understand. Our journey into space will go on. In the skies today, we saw destruction and tragedy. Yet farther than we can see, there is comfort and hope. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. The same creator who names the stars also knows the names 
of the seven souls we mourn today. The crew of the shuttle Columbia did not return safely to Earth, yet we can pray that all are safely home. May God bless the grieving families, and may God, may God continue to bless America. President Bush, uh, after returning from Camp David uh, to the White House, up oh, he's coming back. Let's listen in. All right, we've obviously lost the signal uh, from the president, and um, we'll try to figure out what that's all about in just a bit. But um, we know they uh, didn't return safety, safely to Earth, he said, but we know they are home. Uh, president Bush uh, touching a chord today of sympathy for uh, 